having haunted Pompey since the Battle of Pharsalus. Caesar himself arrived a few days after Pompey's own execution. These events led to the Alexandrian War of 48 to 47 BC. He arrived with a small fleet of 10 warships from his Rhodian allies and a small number of transports. Caesar also had with him the severely understrength 6 and 28th legions. Caesar's best troops consisted of 800 Gauls and Germans, equipped with Roman cavalry. Julius Caesar's arrival at the Ptolemaic capital was neither pleasant nor tactful, as he had offended the Ptolemies from the moment he got off the ship. When Caesar disembarked, fasces or standards were carried in front of him which was seen as an insult to the royal dignity of the king. But today, today we are beasts. We fight for God, for honor, for country, for family, for yourselves I do not care, so long as you fight! As he moved towards the center of Alexandria, clashes between Caesar's men and the Alexandrians took place throughout the city. Caesar then made things worse by ordering Ptolemy and Cleopatra to disband their armies and bring their quarrel to his judgment. But the clashes continued until the evening. Caesar sent several cohorts, distributing them throughout the streets to calm the disgruntled Alexandrians. Caesar then made things worse by ordering Ptolemy and Cleopatra to disband their armies and bring their quarrel to his judgment. He also demanded the immediate repayment of a huge loan he had made to the Ptolemies years earlier. Fearing the loss of their power, Plotinus and Achilles began a conspiracy against Caesar and the Romans. The approach of the Ptolemaic troops was noticed by Julius Caesar and the Romans, but they were too few to reinforce the walls of Alexandria. A battle began in which the Roman soldiers were outnumbered. The cries of commanders and the clash of swords were heard. The battle was fierce, the streets in the district of Alexandria were covered with blood, wounded and killed soldiers. Ptolemy launched the fighting elephants on the Romans, and the battle became even more critical. The elephants crushed and scattered the legionnaires in different directions, freeing their way.
the streets and circumference of Alexandria were again surrounded by clashes. There were heavy losses on both sides of the fighting. Caesar's legionaries stood steadfastly in their tactical troop formation, but were outnumbered to repel attacks from different flanks. Arrows like hail fell on the Romans, commanders. Trusted people of Caesar died from them. This forced them to retreat and set their positions and reorganize their cohorts. Many soldiers were lying around wounded and could not get up to continue the battle, while others were left alone repelling the offensive. Heads fall from their shoulders and spears calcium bodies. The streets were filled with the smell of blood and the groans of the wounded. The Roman cavalry approached to help, which made it possible for the disengaged soldiers to reassemble in tactical formation. Soon the only part of Alexandria, still occupied by the Romans, was the palace district. At least partly walled, the palatial district was located on Cape Lochia, which was at the eastern end of the great harbour of Alexandria. In addition to the palace and government buildings, the palatial area also included Sema, the burial place of Alexander and the Ptolemaic kings, the Great Library, the Museum or Mausion, and its own shipyard known as King's Landing. Caesar posted several cohorts throughout the city to slow down the advance of the Ptolemaic troops. The fiercest fighting in the siege of Alexandria began at the docks of the Great Harbour. When the fighting started, most of Ptolemy's warships were pulled out of the water as it was winter and they needed repairs. Since their crews were dispersed throughout the city, it was impossible to quickly restart them. As a result, the Romans were able to burn most of the ships in the Great Harbour before retreating.
Caesar also sent men across Har to capture the lighthouse on the island of Pharos. This gave the Romans control of the entrance to the Grand Harbour, and the vantage point from which they could observe the Ptolemaic forces. Here also there was a serious collision at the lighthouse. There were many losses, but the lighthouse was taken under control. As night fell after the first day of fighting, the Roman and Ptolemaic forces reinforced their siege positions. Romans sought to fortify their position by demolishing nearby buildings that could be used by Ptolemaic troops, erecting walls, and providing access to food and water. While this was happening, Pothinus, who remained in the palace district, was caught in touch with the Ptolemaic army and executed. After his execution, Arsino, the youngest daughter of the previous Ptolemaic king, fled the palace district and, after the execution of Achilles, took control of the Ptolemaic army. She instructed her former mentor, the eunuch Ganymede, to command. Ganymede reorganized the Ptolemaic forces and sought to cut off the Romans' water supply. Caesar was forced to suspend all operations for several days until new wells could be dug. A Roman supply fleet arrived soon after, but was unable to enter the harbour unaided due to easterly winds. Having landed his supplies, Caesar directed his ships around the island of Pharos to the entrance to the harbour of Eunastos. Ptolemy's troops tried to prevent the Romans from landing, but were unsuccessful and were forced to retreat back to Alexandria. Having strengthened the position of the Romans, Julius Caesar decided to seize control of the Hector Stadium in order to deprive Ptolemy of access to the harbour of Evnostos. The Romans captured the bridge closest to Pharos when they occupied the island, so they now moved against the second bridge. The few Ptolemaic soldiers were expelled by Roman ships and soldiers, however, more Ptolemaic soldiers soon gathered and launched a counter-attack. The soldiers and sailors of the Romans panicked and tried to flee. There was a collision with Caesar's ship, and the ship began to sink. Throwing off his purple cloak, Caesar jumped into the harbour and tried to swim to safety, while Caesar fled. The Ptolemaic soldiers carried off his cloak as a trophy and celebrated their victory. The Romans lost about 800 soldiers and sailors in the fighting. Shortly after this battle, the siege of Alexandria reached a stalemate. Although the Romans had the upper hand in the daily fighting. Thank you for watching my video. 
waiting for your comments and suggestions for the next video. Subscribe to the channel and like if you like this video.